Hello, everybody. Becky here at Aunt Bex Creations. Are we ready to do another owl? And this week, we're going to do mixed media owl. So I'm going to wait for a few people to get here, and we'll talk about that. Um, this was our owl from last week, and this was our first owl. He does not have a name. Hi, Kathy. But um, Janet Baum named this one Eloise. So I stamped her name out with um, stays on, on a piece of fabric from one of the dresses I'm working on. I stamped that on the, um, the edging. So there's her name is on her tummy. So we need to name him or her, whichever. He's not as fancy. I need another light on because you guys are kind of seeing. Hang on. There we go. It's a little better. Hi, Pam. And let's see. I always forget to turn the stupid autofocus off and it drives some people, including myself, crazy. All right. Hi, Ruth. I got me some water. I just ate a piece of cheese to get my stomach to quit growling. And um, Howard, I'm going to put you behind the curtain, honey. I'm sorry. We need to get rid of the sunshiny light. So we're not so bright in one spot. That's a little better. Okay. So we're going to do mixed media today for our owl. And I thought it would be fun to kind of mix it up as a prompt game. Plus use one of the pockets out of the bits and bobs binder. So what I'm thinking is if somebody will give me a... Actually, um, no, I'm going to choose the pocket number. So if you have a Bits and Bobs book, we're going to utilize Pocket 17, whatever's in Pocket 17. And the reason I'm doing that is I just glanced over and it has a lot of autumnal um, kind of colors in it. So I'm going to utilize that. So I'm going to move the owls so they don't get dirty. We'll stick them over here by the box of tissues that I keep handy. And before I get too far started, now I've got all this shadow. It's like, come on, Becky, get, get with the program here. Whoops. Let's bring this over here. Maybe bring it down some. That looks better. I think. I got a card today and I wanted to share it. Um, it's a... It's a get well card from Sharon Lombard. And I love the vintage look of this card. Sorry you're sick. Hope it won't be long. And then look, this is awesome. It's the whole distance up the card. And it says, till things are looking up, get well quick. Hugs, Sharon Lombard. Isn't that awesome? I love these old, I guess, 1950s or maybe 60s. See if it says on the back. It's got a copyright. It says 15C 77-2. And um, I'm not sure what any of that means, but I thought it was really a sweet card. And I'll put that in my, my journal that I kind of just randomly write in. So I'll put that in. So thank you, Sharon. And um, this is a piece of paper that I use in my Pick 10 journal that I did with Lisa at Lisa My Eclectic Life. Remember, we, we did the cover of a journal as a Pick 10, and that's what this is. It, this was an originally a craft book, and so, yeah, and I've, we glued a bunch of stuff on it. And then we did other prompts on top of it. And I always put tape around the edges so that it has a white border. And these are prompt games that we've did. That one I didn't do the edging, which is unusual for me. And with this one, when I put clear coat on, I had already taken the tape off and something was um, reactivated and it spread. So it's not the greatest. 
I love this one. This one turned out cute. And I write on the back what the prompts were. I love her too. She turned out good. Just do a quick flip through. This was a wild Janet, Janet Nash prompt page where we had something dangling. We had fabric cluster. We had an envelope, a belly band, and it said Janet prom Janet's prompts. <laughs> this one was fun. Love this one. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a page to go in here. And what I like about these pages is um, that one was just a color kind of theme, clusters. Done with, I'm not sure who I did this one with. This was a game Beth, Beth Schuler did. So this was one I did with Beth. So that's what I do. I write who I'm doing it with and whatever it is. So all you need is a piece of paper. And then um, if you have a bits and bobs, bobs bind, or bobs binder, we're going to use the things in pocket 17. But before we do that, what I would like for you guys is list some things off that are autumnal or fall related. So that we end up with a background that's fall related. So I'm just going to number these 1 through 10. We're going to do 10 prompts. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if everybody will, hi, Kathy. Kathy and Kathy and Pam and Ruth and Gail and Janet. Is that everybody so far? I think it is. I think I said hi, Gail. Okay. Ruth says pumpkin. Sweaters. Um, I'm going to put stencil with brown. Anybody else got some ideas? Oh, okay, Gail. Okay. Wind. All right. And let's see. I'm going to put rust. And it can be rust paint, rust ink, whatever. Leaves. Bonfires. Yes, there's going to be an owl. The, the, I'll put owl on here. Owl is going to be our focus, our focal image. So everything else will be the background. Okay, we got leaves and falling leaves. So I'll just add falling to the leaves. Harvest moon. Okay, that gives us our 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my pocket 17 stuff first, just so you guys can kind of see what I have. This is my Bits and Bobs binder. This is the binder that I keep um, 20 pockets in. Pocket five is always fabric bits, and I should have been adding some more fabric bits. We're not going to sew this week. Um, I've been sewing a lot, and I just wanted a little bit of a break from the sewing, and I want to develop a pattern for another sewn owl, but I want it to be something small that can be added. It's going to be a small sewing project, the next one. This week, we're going to just do um, a mixed media piece using our scraps out of pocket 17 and then these other, other things. So this is kind of the stuff I have that I can utilize, but I'm just going to shove it off to the side. 
And then I'm going to do the random number lister and mix these prompts up. And by whatever they, um, whatever they tell me to do, I will renumber it. Um, we don't need to call somebody. Let's see. Sequence generator. I just couldn't think of what it was. So we're going to do 1 to 20. No, no, 1 to 10 because Becky can't count today. 1 to 10. Get sequence. All right. So our first one, I'm going to renumber mine on the, like, here's my list. I'm going to put them. Um, how they're listed on here. So number eight is going to be number one. Number five will be number two. Quit going to sleep. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. So the first prompt is going to be what we listed as number eight, which says bonfire. So if you want to utilize something from your pile of stuff, you can do that. Um, pocket 17 is actually a prompt um, on its own, but there you it comes up as our 10th prompt. So you can save all of that and create your owl out of your bits and bobs, or you can use portions of it to create a bonfire. So I'm thinking I'm going to pull out some things that are kind of fiery colored. So... There's red, orange, yellow. And I'm just going to tear some shapes. Looking to see, just real quick, what else do I have? See, I could actually take a piece of this paper and just if I wanted to reorder things and go ahead and use pocket 17 now and make this my background, if you wanted an instant background, you do what you want to do. I'm really leaning toward using one of these as a background. It'd be really cool background. I could do that and just say that the colors are those of a bat, of a bonfire. I might do that. I'm going to do that. That first piece I had had some interesting colors on it and I mixed it in. See this look, kind of looks like a bonfire. This one's got more color to it. All right, I'm going to play and mix things up a little bit. Everything I pull away that I am going to decide not to use goes back in the bits and binders for another project. I want rough edges is what I'm going for. So I might glue this right here and then maybe take some of this that's where it's red in the middle. And see how I'm pulling away from the part I want to keep? That's so that there's no white showing on my paper. 
get some of the pieces I'm pulling away. All right. And I'm going to pull this into three different pieces. So see, I've got some that's the right way and then some that's showing the white. So then I'll just pull just a tiny little bit away again. So I keep my rough space there. And then again, I'm going to do this and then pull a little bit more away. So all I have is the edges that don't show white. And see, I'm going to glue that on and then maybe put this on like this. And then a piece of this here. Kind of glue them on like that. So that's what I'm going to do there. So that's going to be my bonfire. And I'll glue that down. So I'm going to cross bonfire off. I'm also using things out of my pocket, but you don't have to. Um, you don't have to say you've used pocket 17. You can just use things out of it as you want to. Oh my goodness. I haven't used this much podge in so long. My podge in so long. There we go. Oh, you know what I don't have in here is a glue brush. Hang on. So when you when you're doing prompts, don't be afraid to like uh, open up what it means. You know what I'm saying? Hi, Barbara Clark. I'm gonna glue this big guy down first here. And if you're new to mixed media, remember, there's always an ugly phase. Always, always an ugly phase. We all go through ugly phases. It's the only way you get to the other side is to go through it. Right? All right. So, I'm going to flip this over here this on here. I actually remembered some paper towels this time. And if you have a scraper somewhere, I have a scraper. Here we go. You can scrape this smooth. You can use an old gift card, an old credit card. All right. And then we're going to do this one up here. Hi, Janet Nash. So we're playing mixed media today. And I thought how fun it would be to do this. And then I can take it over to my scanner and I can shrink it down and I can get, make it so I put two on each piece of paper you know, I'll put it in my software so I can print off two to a page. And when I do that, then I can cut them in half and make cards. So I can mail some cards out with the owl creation that we're making today and send out some happy mail. And I would keep the original and I could share my art in card form. Shell C taught me all about using a card to smooth things out. She does it all the time when she's doing her beautiful paper paperwork. She uses a card to smooth everything. She's also the reason I did the 
kitty cat portraits of my cats with paper piecing. And she showed how to do that one time. So if you've never watched Shell C do her paper piecing, I can highly recommend it. All right, so that's going to be my bonfire. And I'm just going to put the lid on this because the I don't know about y'all, but we have flies coming in for um, because it's getting ready to cool off. And we couldn't find our fly swatter and couldn't find our fly swatter. So yesterday we decided we're going to go get a fly swatter. So um, we went, we're getting ready to leave out to Ace Hardware. And Greg says, you're looking for the fly swatter, right? He says, it's laying right here on the fireplace. I said, I don't care. I'm going to get some more fly swatters and I'm going to put one by my work table by Scott's chair in the den. And we're going to have one in our bedroom. That way, if there's a fly flying around at night, he's going to die. No matter what, that fly will die. All right, so the next one that it said to do, it says wind. Prompt two is wind. And we're just going to draw a single line through here. So how should we do wind? Do y'all want to just paint it on, draw it on? How should we represent wind? Hi, Barbara. Chicken pot pie. Sharon, I shared your lovely card at the beginning. Thank you so much. Yes, I love Shell's um, paper piecing. So how should we do wind, you guys? Swirls. Do some swirls. So now I'm thinking, what color should the swirls be? Uh, light blue, maybe? And I actually have, I actually have a small, I have a stencil somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. See, I have this. It's a swirl of dots. That could represent wind, couldn't it? And see, if I just do it on the edge, when I pull the tape away, it'll be right on the edge. I'm going to do this. And I think I will do a chili blue color to represent cooler weather. So I need a bluish color. I'm going to use, well, that says Ocean Bill blue. That, that doesn't sound very chilly, does it? Um, it seems kind of tropical. Let me dig a little bit here. I have true blue. I have two bottles of true blue. They're both open. That's not like me. I'm going to do a little bit of look at me blue and a little bit of true blue. Get something to put those on. I got these little tr trays at the dollar store. I'll use those and sponge. And of course, I don't have a tub of water. Let me go grab a tub of water to throw my sponges in. And my page is kind of small, so I'm only going to put three, um, three swirly things on here, I think. Let's put just a little of this blue, a little, and then Becky squeezes out a ton. Just a little bit of this one, little. There we go. Dip a little bit on that side, a little bit on this side.
I'm trying to tap off a bunch of the paint because if you get too much paint, then it slides under your stencil. That's not a good thing. And remember, we, we're only on prompt two and we're doing 10 prompts. So if you go too heavy, then you'll be too full and then it'll start looking overwhelming. Let me um, grab my, one of my little composition books that Dee Dee has me doing here. Here, this is a good page for this blue to go on. When I get this little book full of my excess of paint, I'll go through and add a quote to each page and it'll be like an instant little journal here. And if you use drop paper, put some on your drop paper too. That way, when it's time to switch out drop paper, you have all this pretty paper you can cut apart and use to make cards. I do that all the time. All right. So that's going to represent my wind. And this goes in my tub of stuff here. And I'll take my paper towel and just kind of wipe this off. I had to get all the fabric out of the way from where, because I, I use, my room is divided between my sewing and, you know, my arting. And if I mix them up, it's not a good, it's not a good thing. All right, thank you, Janet, for putting the prompts in. Hi, Joni. Anybody I miss coming in, welcome. We're doing mixed media today. Um, so we're ready for prompt three, which according to the number picker, it said to do leaves or falling leaves is number three. So you, you do you and um, decide how you want to do those. If you have um, a punch that'll do a leaf, you could punch leaves out of painty paper and add them. If you have a stencil, you can use a stencil. Um, if you wanted to free cut, <coughs> sorry, free cut some leaves, you could do that. So whatever you have, let's see, what do I have that I can use? I have lots of things that could be punched. Let me check and see if I have a leaf punch that's on the bigger side. I know I have a bunch of tiny ones, but I don't really want to go there. Punches, punches, flowers and leaves. Oh, I don't like that. I think all of my leaves punches are on the small side. So I think I'm going to opt for stenciling because I know I have, a, I think it's a Tim Holtz leaf stencil. Let's see here. Excuse me. Um, I don't think it's in the small one. Is 
Here's the fruit. I can see I was lazy the last time I did jelly printing because I've got a bunch of dirty stencils in here. Oh, well. All right, this is all round ones. Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah, it's Tim Holtz. And you can tell I like to use it because it's filthy. So colors here. That one doesn't feel like there's anything in it. I really don't think there's anything in this one. Ooh, it's really gross. We'll set that aside. I'll deal with it in a little bit. Ooh, that one's thick. some of this up and then maybe add some of the thinner paint to it. I think I'm just gonna mix those two. Mix those two together. Oh, stuck my finger in it. I'm turning the stencil to make it look like it's a falling leaf. I'm just pushing out the last little bit so I have some different shades of leaves on here. My stuff out of my pocket is kind of in my way. Is there any more paint here that I can sop up and use? All right, good enough. Let's see, I can get my little book back. And turn to another page. Maybe put a little bit on this page. But you don't want to waste that 69 cent paint or whatever it is. They I think it's up to when it's on sale, it's a dollar twenty something, dollar twenty five a, a bottle anymore. I think that's good. I think that's as good as that's going to get. Everybody ready for the next prompt? Let me turn back to that other page. It'll probably stick together if I don't, because I put a lot of paint down. Actually, it's pretty dry. All right, and I'm gonna be bad. I'm gonna slide my stencil back in the pocket, dirty and all. You can always soak them in Murphy's oil soap. 
will the ideas you've sparked already begin? Uh oh. <laughs> All right, so we did number three. All right, four is they um, they want us to put a pumpkin on here. So however you want to do your pumpkin. Let's see. How do we want to do a pumpkin? Do I have? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a punched pumpkin like I've done before. So I've got this piece of orange that was in my pocket, um, 17. I'm going to punch out some ovals. Uh, let's see here. If you don't have an oval punch, you can still do this with a circle punch um, to make pumpkins. But you just need three of these. One. Two. And three. And then what you're going to do is we're going to, um, I'm going to go around the edge with whatever ink you decide you would like to, to use. I'm going to use, as soon as I find my ink, I think I'm going to use stays on in the brown simply because we don't know what's going to go on next. And I don't want, I don't want it to smear. I want it to be permanent. Grab a sponge. And I'm just inking the edges on my ovals. And if you've been here for a while, you guys have seen me do these pumpkins like this before. So just put a little ink around all of the edges here. So there's that one. There's that one. And by inking these edges, you, you give your pumpkin some dimension. All right, before we put that up, I'm going to grab a little piece of a brownish color, if I can find a brownish color that's on a firmer paper than that. Let me see. This could be interesting. And I'm just going to hand cut a stem shape. Um, so, you know, pumpkins have the little edge and then they have a little stem like that. And then it might come back down and then you come in this direction. So if you just hand cut these, it'll look more organic and natural. So here's my stem, okay? And I'm gonna ink it too, but you only have to ink the top edges up here. Because the part that's rounded, most of that's gonna be between the layers here. All right, I'm gonna turn my project over so we have a, a blank here. So when you put your pumpkin together, put these two ovals next to each other or even overlapping a little. Let's overlap them just a little bit. And then this oval goes in the middle, but slightly lower on the bottom. And then your stem will go behind them. But I always glue the ovals together and then put the stem on the back. So let me put this together for you guys. And this is the quickest way I know to make a pumpkin. And if you use a circle die, you'll just have a short fat pumpkin instead of a, a taller pumpkin. And all pumpkins are welcome, right? They all look cool. So we're gonna overlap these. So it looks like that. And then we'll put this one in the middle. But you want to drop it lower than these two. So I'm just going to put some glue like this. And I'll put this slightly lower than the other two. 
and glue it down. And then this will come on like so. All right, so you just put a little glue on your stem piece. And then you just line it up where you want it and glue it down. And you have a pumpkin. Now, if you want to um, add dimension to it more, you can do doodling and stuff. But I always wait until my page is about done. So I'm just going to add my pumpkin to my page. I just got to make sure I'm inside my my tape area because I don't want to have to try to cut this pumpkin. So do I want him there or do I want him over here? I think I want him on this side because this side is so busy already. So I'm just going to glue him down. So that's how I'm going to add my pumpkin. If you have a stencil, you could stencil a pumpkin. You could just flat out paint a pumpkin. So let me let me throw some ideas out there for our next our next owl just so you guys are thinking on it and you can give me feedback either in the um, comments below or we can talk about it on Facebook in my group. Um, I'm thinking charm size, so no bigger than like three or four inches tall, and I'm thinking of adding beading and sequins to him, and I'm thinking. This could be a journal charm or um, you could make a necklace and we could have him sitting on a just a stick that we could go outside and find and then maybe put, um, do you know the stuff that's called rat tail? It's the satiny rope looking stuff. We, we could tie it around the ends of our stick and then we put our little owl on him and then we could wear our little owls. So that, that's what I want to think about doing. And I was thinking this week, I'm what I might do is work up, work one up so that I work out all the bugs before I bring it to you. And um, hi, Roy. And Barbara is here. And Janet Burgess, hello. And Sherry. So I will probably doodle on this to bring that pumpkin out more after we're done. So that was prompt four. Prompt five now is saying to add rust. So how would we like to add some rust to this? I think I'm just going to put a little bit of... I'm going to leave that over here. Let's see. How do I want to add rust? You know what I think I will do? Hmm. I'm gonna do a rusty, rusty brown. I'm gonna I'm gonna twist this a little bit, tweak it. I'm gonna do a rusty brown branch to come over. So I have some place for my little owl to sit. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit and add a little orange to some brown. I'll just grab a random brown. And then I need something that looks kind of rusty. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll get some metallic paint in a kind of coppery color, and we'll call that rust. And I'm just going to Ooh, what was that? That's a coupon. A coupon out of nowhere for Occuvite Adult Vitamins. Woohoo! Now you know. How about a copper? Brown and copper branch. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to kind of free, free form this thing and come up 
and over right and along in here and that'll give me some place to put my owl to set but whatever you decide to do you go for it do Roy as an owl I bet Roy can do that with his computer program he can put his face on an owl Roy is good at doing that I'm not so good at the whole video editing. <laughs> In fact, I have two videos sitting on my camera that I've been putting off because I don't want to do the editing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so I've just got a an ill-shaped brush, and I'm just going to freeform this. This isn't a very dark brown. Yep, about had a heart attack earlier. Um, checked to see how much they were going to charge for the the new diabetic medicine that's been working so good. And uh, without insurance, that ain't happening. Whew. Man, that was a shocker. It's over $1,000 for 30 days. Whew. Man, just can't do it. And I do okay on just the metformin. And I've got enough ahead of that to be all right for a little bit. And Scott has a job interview. So that's all a win-win. All right. Now I want it to get my rust effect. I'm going to add some copper to the top of this brown. That's going to be my rust. And as always, I have put out way too much paint. Oh, Howard's on the move. All right, how's everybody doing on their rusting? You about rusted up? I did send a message to my nurse practitioner so she knows what's going on. So no worries there. I'm doing all the things that I can and that I know I should. And it really is a shame we have to make those kind of decisions. But it is what it is. And there's nothing else I can do about it right at the moment. All right. That's going to be my rusty branch. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yes. And um, Shannon will be on at 3 o'clock today. And there's Shannon. Hi, Shannon. And um, let's see. I got out all this paint. I need to deal with it real quick. Get my little book back. My little Dee Dee inspired paint wipe off book. And I think I'll just grab a sponge and just kind of 
scoop it up and cover this page in brown and copper here. And then I'll tell you guys what the next prompt is. This is a great way to use up all that paint that you, whoops. And these little books um, are just glued in. They're not sewn in, so they do tear easy. So you can't be as aggressive as I was. And what I do to fix that is I put some masking tape and then I just go over it again with something else. You can use washi tape too, but you have to add additional glue to get it to stick. But this is a great way to use up your excessive paint. And you can just smear the paint on and then the next time you do something, you can stencil over it. There we go. And the pages will stick together and stuff, but I just gently pull them apart. Haven't had a problem. Too bad. Sometimes it tears, not too often. Set that over there out of the way. So I did the rust. I'm going to cr cross that off. So number six, stencil with brown. Stencil with brown. Stencil with brown, and I've got brown out. I should have saved some of that brown. I'll use a different shade of brown. That, that's what I'll do. Oh, that one's, I think this one's gone too far. I might do a stencil of brown as a border. Let me see if this is any good at all. Ugh. Oh, I think this one's going in the trash. It, it's got big old glob in it. Can you tell my paint's getting really old? I need to do like Barb Owen and do a clear out of this really old stuff. I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty. It's pretty thick. Let's see what I can do with it. And we need something I can use as a border. Um, let's see. Oh, that would be cute. I have this little squares. And I'll just line that up on the edge there. I just got to make sure I get most of the paint back off my sponge so that I'm not putting a ton of paint. So let's see what we can do with this old goopy paint. Knock some of it off on my drop paper. And I'm not going to go all the way around because I want to leave it so that branch is kind of not in the border. So maybe skip a little bit and then do another one. That paint's really thick, you guys. I don't think it's going to work. That's not too bad. Oh, it's just awful. I think I'm going to throw it in the trash. Maybe do a little row right along here, I'm trying to make sure I'm on the right side of the masking tape.
my sister Robin, the one I did a video with about the pottery. This morning she had a kind breakfast bar, you know, those um, granola bar like things, and they say something like be kind on them. And it was dark when she was eating it, and she felt something in her mouth, and it was a piece of a rubber band. I told her, I said, you need to contact that company. That's awful. Imagine if a child had been eating that or something. That's why I don't like those bars too much. You just never know what might have fallen in those machines. I guess I'm paranoid about it. All right, that's going to have to do it. So that gives me a little bit of a border. You'll be surprised at how cool this looks when we um, pull the tape off. All right, so that's going to be my stencil with brown. Let me put this in here. I'm going to try to clean that off in there real quick, you guys. That paint is nasty, and it'll make my stencil not very usable in short order. Wet one will take care of that. And it's real sticky. Clean my pan out a little bit. Yeah, I think this one's going in the trash because that's just disgusting. All right. Next says that was the stencil with brown. So that was prompt six. Seven says harvest moon. What did you miss? I don't know what the leather belt thing is that y'all are talking about either. I missed that. Hold up. I got to be nosy and see what you guys are talking about. Oh, Bootsy did a video about using a leather belt. Mmm, brie and apple. Skip the Trisket. I like the brie and the apple. <laughs> Be right back. Need a hot beverage, says Barbara. That's fine. Harvest Moon is our next prompt. Bonfire, wind, leaves, pumpkin, rust, stencil with brown, and harvest moon. Yep. Ooh, to make a tassel. Hi, Janice Glines. All right. Harvest moon, we need a circle and some goldish yellow paint, right? Ooh, what if we do it like right in the back here? Then our owl will go on top of it. Whoop, whoop. We just need a big circle, which I have big circles here. From Creative Memory Days. Look, I could do a huge harvest moon. I could do that one. Those are more ovals. I think I'm going to do this great big. moon to have behind my owl like right in there so it's off to one side a little bit all right I'm using a lot of stencils today which means I'll have a jar full of sponges to wash yay me now if you don't want a stencil we could just use a piece of yellow paper if you wanted to I'm going to use paint because I seem to be on a roll with the paint I have a golden yellow, and I think I will also use a little kind of vanilla -y paint. And I'll get I'll get a clean little tray. Well, cleanish little tray, maybe. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon up in the sky. Thanks for the thumbs up. Yeah, 
all my paint is <laughs> it's reached its use by date I'm afraid all right here we go Ooh, that's more yellow than I thought it was going to be it's all right we'll bring the, the other color in and it'll be fine Ready? Here we go. Harvest Moon. Ta-da! When in doubt, just clean your stencil on your table. You'll be fine. All right, there's my harvest moon. Okay, there's that. Harvest Moon. Number eight, sweaters. Now, how are we going to represent sweaters, you guys? Do we want to put a sweater on our owl? Do we want to um, combine eight, nine, and ten? Do owl sweaters and the stuff out of pocket 17. I'm thinking of making my owl out of the stuff that came out of pocket um, 17. So what I might do is I might do an owl using my punch. So I kind of carry the pumpkin kind of same shape up and I can make an owl with that punch as well like that. And I could get a round punch for his head to add to the top we can use this as his wings and his body and then maybe another sized round punch for his tummy and we could utilize all the stuff in pocket 17 and Roy says add a sheep to it and that would be your sweater hmm Becky says hmm I also have heart shapes. Let's see. Oh, that makes a cool. I'm just pulling out some different circular shapes just to see what I can end up with. All right. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the sweater just yet. So I'm just going to combine the last three prompts, the sweater, the owl, and pocket 17. I'm going to combine them to, to create my focal image. So I'm going to set this aside to dry while I work on my owl. And we'll bring this back over, our background back over here in just a minute. So I'm going to make my owl up. So basically, I just need a base. 
So if I do two of these, and then how big, is this gonna be too big for a head? Let me see. Would that be too big for his head? Yes, that's way too big for his head. I need something smaller than this. So that's too big. I have this one that can make his head, I think. Let's see what that looks like. Or I could use two of those overlapped for his head. And then his wing would be this oval cut in half. I could cut these out of different colors so you guys could see it better, couldn't I? Let's do it. The purple part is going to be covered. Anyway, you're not going to see it by the time I'm done. So if I take those wings away, you can see how I'm going to put these wings on. Kind of like that. And then these could be his head. Like so. And then you could put something circular and he needs a beak. All right. I could use this for his tummy. And just cover that. Or you can do like we've done before and just punch out a bunch of circle, tiny circles and cover his tummy in tiny circles. But it all depends on what you have in your pocket of stuff. I've got some of that paper left here. And I have, I don't know what size, maybe a quarter inch size circle. Whoa, Howard, did you fall out the basket, buddy? And just punch out some circles in different papers. Just randomly. Am I missing anything? Any questions? All right, I probably have enough to cover the little area that I need to cover, but these are just random little circles. It would probably be easier for you guys to see if I put that on even this gaudy green here. all you need there's the oval cut in half makes two wings two smaller circles or if you've got them with the scallops on it that can go for his head and then we'll do something for his eye let's do his body first so these wings will go on a little overlapped at the top so he almost looks like a ladybug see like that so in this area, in that V that comes up, you want to fill that with the little circles. So I just kind of eyeball it and I'll put, I'm just going to put these on randomly. Just put some glue on here. And then just grab some of your little circles. If you put one right in the middle, and you can put one on either side, overlapping a little bit. And my glue is drying faster. So I'm going to put a little glue. Come on. 
like so. Okay. So now on the next row, you'll overlap a little bit more and it might be easier to put the glue just on the back of your little circle. And it doesn't have to cover the whole thing. So now this one, put it off so it's like halfway over this circle and then the next one will go over halfway of that. Okay, like that. I might need to punch out some more of these. And remember, as you go up the owl, the space you have to cover is getting smaller and smaller because it makes a triangle. And I think on the wing pieces, I am going to just cover the whole thing and then trim away. Um, now, I know it should be coming in, but I'm trying to cover the sides at the moment as well. And I still want kind of an overlap on his tummy. Because once you get to the top, it's it's hard to keep um, doing them overlapping. It ends up to where there's a circle on top of a circle on top of a circle. You just have to keep kind of layering it. So he doesn't look like he's just got a pile of circles on his tummy. Let's get some more paper here. The little guy. Let's see here. I'll pop three of these out. And then maybe some more of this yellow. Oh, it's stuck in there now. There we go. I hope I haven't missed anything. Oh my goodness, I've got so many notifications. I can't see you guys. Okay. Riri's here. Hi, Riri. Janet Burgess took a message away. Everybody's saying hi to Riri. All right. If you, you want to, you can take your wings and see how much farther you need to, to cover. So see, I don't have too much left. I just want to cover that purple. Okay. So I've probably got plenty of little circles here. Is that going to cover him? Nope, I need one more. Oh, 
that's the wet paper towel. So the last three pop prompts, I'm going to kind of combine. All right. His head will cover that last tiny little bit. So now thinking, how can I come put, um, how can I make this look like, I need a sweater. That's, that's the thing I'm, that's getting me. I was thinking, what if, let's get rid of some of this stuff. What if we just take I'm looking at my painty papers I have here. That's kind of brown. Can I, can I like, um, draw on it to make it look like a sweater? Maybe is what I'm thinking. This has got little squares that could fake out a sweater, couldn't it? Let me just glue this on here. Let's just glue these. Where's the check, though? I want that checky bit. Right here. Bear with me while I'm using brain power. All right. All right, I need to sit down a minute. <coughs> of course, the coffin hat can't stay away while we do this. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing okay. Oh, that sounds cool. Riri's talking about mixing up some writ dye. See, I have, <clears throat> hang on. I have some of that Tombow fabric spray paint uh, dye stuff that um, Barb Owen had on her channel at one time. And the reason I have so much of it is it was on clearance at Hobby Lobby. So, yeah. I picked it up while it was nearly free. All right, let's see if this even looks like a sweater. That's what I'm going for here. And remember all my excessive bits just go back in my bits and bobs binders. So this is a multi use project. We're doing bits and bobs and an owl and a prompt game, a pick 10. And Janet's put the prompts in above and uh, I'm combining the last three prompts which were um, sweaters, owls, and pocket 17. Oh it does kind of look like a sweater. His wings will be his sweater. S sweater weather, right? Sweater weather.
And again, you can always add more doodles and stuff. So I might get a picture of what a knitted sweater looks like and maybe doodle what looks like sweater stitches on his wings around these little squares. So that'll go on there like that. If I remember right, we at one time, where's the larger one of those punched out shapes? I just want to try something and I don't really want to punch another one, but I will. I might punch another one of these out because... I think the last time I made these, I used this one, but I cut it in half like so, so that I could put it together. Maybe, maybe it was the smaller one. It was the smaller one. So we can take this smaller one and cut it in half. And if you turn it, you can get ears this way. So do like that and like that. And then we can add a beak and eyes on top. All right, I'm going to glue his wings on so they quit moving because that's driving me crazy. Now, when I put it on, I put the top of this to the top of my base and then I just angle him out at an angle. So that's what I'm going to do. Flo might like an owl sweater, Janet said. I'm going to put the glue on his body because then I know I'm not going to get it on my fingers too badly. So Flo might need an owl sweater. There we go. There's that one. And I do overlap a little bit at the top. So I'll put a little glue on the piece I just set down. My glue is starting to get empty. So it doesn't have the, um, I was going to say compression, but that's not what I mean. It, it doesn't have... The displaced air, whatever that's called. So if you want his tummy feathers to stick out, doodle. Just doodle on them. Just go around the edges. You could use black. You could use gold. I might use a gold pen after I attach him to the page. So now I'm thinking I need to cover a piece of paper with something besides bright purple. And that will be his, his ears, as everybody says, ears. And then you could punch out some circles for his eyes. So let me do something here. Let me see. I really would like his head to be more vibrant than his body, but not too bad off. What if we do this and punch our small, not that one, this one. <coughs> this is just a piece of book paper. Punch that out. Maybe ink the edges a bit. We should have inked his wings. Too late now. I can ink the outer edge of him. But it would have been better to ink his, the inner edge of his wing before I glued it down. There we go. I'll, I'll get it zhuzhed so that everything shows a little better. And I'm going to just, before I cut this in half. Do the outer edges. And then I'll cut it in half. And I just eyeball this. Just kind of cut it in half. So 
So you have to decide how you want this to go on because if you let's let's just look at the differences that you get. Do you want the ruffle to go up and be on the top of his ears or do you want it to be down around the bottom of his eyes? So I want to move that cuz it's just confusing me. So if we take these and we put them this way, then that ruffle is at the top of his head. And I don't think I like it as well as if you flip them so the straight edge kind of points toward his beak. Like this. So I'm going to glue them down and I'm going to try to put the points where the wings cross here, I'm going to put the bottom of that on this side, and then this one will go on that side, and then we'll put circles on top of that for the eyes. All right, so I'm just going to put some glue on here. And I will put this like so. Oops. Oh, I've lost it. Where'd it go? Did it go on the floor? Is it in my lap? Oh, goodness. It just went away. Did you guys see where it flipped to? Oh, here it is. Never mind. I got it. This is so fiddly. Fiddly. I might overlap that one little ruffle there. All right. Now we'll use this punch. And we need to give him some good looking eyeballs. Let's see what this looks like punched. I might have to see if I've got the next size up. Yeah, we're going to need some bigger ones than that. Oh, that's kind of cool with the yellow dot. Let's do another one with the yellow dot so it looks like a highlight. And then I will get another round punch because I have plenty of round punches. All right, so we can try. Are these the same size? I don't think so. Dig through your papers, see what you got here. I need something brighter than that. Oh, this might do. This one's going to be too big. I'm going to put his hooty eyes on there like that. So I'm going to glue those down. And then I need a beak. Got to put the beak on before you put the littler circles on. The fun is making him look, look good once you get him attached to the page. Now, I am overlapping these two larger circles. Okay. Now we need to give him a beak. What do we have that's beak colored? Does he need an orange beak to go with his, his gaudy purple eyeballs? Let's see. I can always trim it smaller. I'm going to do up, make a diamond shape beak like that. 
and we'll glue that on there. And again, you can add doodles and make him look dimensional and extra goofy. And kind of put that on there like he's got his head cocked sideways. Looking at you going, who are you? Who are you? I like that these have the pupils on them, just in the pattern paper. Overlap the nose a little bit. Try to put these next to each other. Whoops. Too much glue. That's what you do when you get fat fingered. Squeeze too hard. All right. Well, there's the owl. And, uh, we can add him to our page. So let's get the page back and see what he's going to look like in front of the harvest moon that we have here. All right. So let's we'll stick him on the branch. If you want to give him feet, you give him feet. I'm going to put him in that little recessed area. He could have been a whole lot bigger if I'd had bigger pin punches, but... It's all right. I'm going to glue him down just as he is. I'll spread this out with my finger since I have a wet one here handy. Whoops. My bad. Got it on the table. I'm going to stick him right here. I need my gluing block that Scott gave me that I use all the time to hold him down. And then I can look at chat for a minute while this sets up. All right. So I think I'm done with the glue. We'll cover it so I don't mess up. <coughs> this is just a piece of I think oak and it's just real heavy and it holds things down so that uh, yeah they stick good I'm going to grab um, my gold signal I have a gold one and a white one I have Posca pens I want the real narrow one not that I like the ones that have a pointy tip on them over the fatter ones. Yeah. And we might also want the um, Stabilo All, which I think that's what this is. Yeah. That we can add shading. And I usually use Sharpie to make a little bl black line around my edge. Let me grab my fat Sharpie. I'm shaking it like it's a Posca pen and a ruler. All right. So we'll play with some doodles. <coughs> and let's see. What else are you guys talking about? Thanks for the thumbs up. Hi, Angie. I'm going to put my pocket 17 stuff back in the pocket. I think we're pretty much done with it for right now. And don't forget, after me, at 3 o'clock, Art Junkie Shannon's coming on. So we'll have to see what Shannon comes up with. And um, I've made another little dress for Project Dress-A-Girl. And what I'm going to do, before I nail them off, I'll do kind of a, a fashion show on hangers. Because I don't have, like, little kids I can dress up anyway. I would love to get a child size dress form that I could put things on. So if one ever shows up at the thrift store, that's when that'll happen. Because they're too expensive to buy outright. 
just to take pictures, you know. Oh my goodness, I'm getting down to the little teeny pieces. I need to do like a um, master board with this pocket and just glue this stuff down and make it just a glued master board. Or make one of these like um, Vicky. Vicky sent me that. And uh, just make one of those up and stick it in some Happy Mail. Somebody else could use my bits. <laughs> So feel free to add anything out of your pocket 17 or your scraps to your page. Um, we all have a different technique and level of um, putting things on our paper. This could be fun. I've got some gold washi there. I might use some of that on this page. having trouble getting all this stuff back in here. I don't know how I had it in here. A little bit at a time, I guess. Oh, this is very... Oh. <laughs> Some of these pieces are like border pieces and they just kind of are hard to shove back in here. Janice had to go. Bye, Janice. Thanks for coming. It will be a short visit today, Shannon says. She's dyeing fabric. I want to do the ice dyeing that Janet Nash and my friend um, Michelle at Michelle Sews Again. Michelle at Michelle Sews Again, man. She makes up big pieces and then she sews them into clothes. Or she'll <coughs> make something and then she'll dye it. That kind of scares me because after all the work of sewing something together, what if the dye job doesn't work out? So she's a brave woman. Boy, there's a lot in this envelope. Why did I choose this one? Huh? Because I thought I might use more of it than I did. And I usually I'll add a quote to these pages in this book. So I might have to look up an autumnal quote. And Greg had an interview yesterday, and it went well. And Scott has an interview Friday, which is a continuation of current interviews. It's what? It's going to go well. It's going to go well. Scott's determined it's going to go well. And it usually does. He does real good at interviewing. I suck at interviewing because I freeze up. I don't know why I freeze up, but I do. And I hated interviewing people. When I was a manager, I hate that was a part of my job. I absolutely hated. <laughs> I don't know why. I just didn't like it. Oh, I've got to redo that table. It's about to collapse. Anywho. All right, guys, we've used punches out the wazoo. I got the paint. All right, let's see if he's dry enough that we can do some doodly bits. Because I know a lot of people um, like to see how to doodle stuff. Hi, Tip. Can't jump up right now, buddy. No, not right now. I will. I know he will. All right, I'll try to remember to put the prompts in the description box for those that missed it. All right, so there's our owl. 
All right. I think the first thing I'm going to do is do my border edge. So I just line this up so it's a little bit away from the edge of the masking tape. And then I take my Sharpie. And I just go around. Where's the edge of the tape? I'm looking for the tape there. And I think what I'll do is I'll bring this over here and stop at the pumpkin and start up on this other side of the pumpkin. Like so. You'll see why I do this here in just a minute. Because I'm going to pull the tape off before I do the doodling, just so you guys can see what it looks like. And I, I always tape it to something that I can move. I learned my lesson a while ago not to tape it to the table because you can't turn your piece then. But if you put it on a piece of scrap chipboard or a piece of cereal box or something like that, then you can turn your work around. No, Tippy. No. So carefully pull your tape off. And when I use the masking tape, I always put it on my arm to remove some of the stickum. And I keep the tape low to the paper. I don't try to pull way high because you'll rip your paper. Just pull it slow and steady and you'll end up with a nice crisp line. Oh, see, I've tore it there. That's not good. It tore for some reason, but that's all right. It is what it is. All right, and then I did the other side. I just think it gives it a nice pretty border when you put the black, just a skinny line of black frames it on out. Oh, he's such a spoiled little wretch. And I probably won't do all of the doodling live because I need to take a break, but I will do some of it. I try not to pull it too fast because if you do, that's when you end up ripping your paper. Then you have to pull out the glue again to glue it back down. All right, and then that goes back in, and there's my paper. And it's rotten to the core. All right. Isn't that cool? Roy says it's cool. All right, I'm going to use the Stabilo All and put a little shading up under the pumpkin. And it might go past my line, but I kind of like that idea. And then you take your paintbrush. Hopefully I don't have a bunch of paint in it. Of course I do. Because you don't need a lot of water to make this stuff move. You really don't. See? Some of this, if I'd done it before I removed the, the tape, 
I wouldn't get it on my white bits. But <laughs> I'm going to be okay with it this time. Good enough. So now if you wanted to make your, um, your branch a little bit more visible, just take some of your still bill all and just put a little few marks on it. You don't have to color a dark, a dark, dark line. Just lay a little bit of this down because once you hit it with water, it darkens real quick, real quick. See what I mean, jelly bean? I've got to cook us some lunch too. So if you have a Stabilo all and you haven't been using it, pull it out. You could all, this really needs to be sharpened. Let me see if I can find my sharpener real quick. Oh, of course, I think, 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 think. Um, not sure. Let me go to the big sharpener. I don't know where my hand fell is. We have a old timey school sharpener in the other room, so I went and sharpened mine. I'm going to add some detail on my my stem a little bit. Remember, a little bit goes a long way because once you start hitting it with water, let's put a little bit more dark on this pumpkin here and there on the pumpkin. All right, and then get the paintbrush back. And we'll move it around a little bit. Just trying to darken that down enough that I'm going to come back in with a gold, um, a gold pen. Are we talking food now? I've been wanting to make that quinoa, quinoa salad that I made a few months back.
trying to get trying hard not to get too much water because I don't want my glue to start coming loose. All right, I'm going to say that's good enough because I can bring in some more different highlights and stuff. Um, I do want to darken where his wings are. There. On the inside of his wings, and maybe on one side of his beak, and under his eyes a little bit here, for his floofy head, a little bit at each corner of his eye. Oh, Janet had to go. Bye, Janet. And I'm going to put a little dark around my moon so that in a little bit I'll come back with either the white signal or the Posca pen and add a little lightness on top of the dark because by adding this dark bit I'll kind of knock my bright colors out of the way so the moon is more visible. All right, and you might want to add a little bit of dark under your owl, kind of like his shadow. Maybe that can be the owl shadow a little bit like that. So doodling is really what adds to your picture. It's like when Janet says she's going to add more, she does. She adds all these doodles and stuff, and it brings brings the picture to life. If you don't take the time to do the added doodling, you're missing out on a good portion of, you know, what makes it look really cool in the end. And if you've never played with a Stabilo All, you might want to add it to your, I want to try this, because it really can make things look extra cool. And extra cool is always cool. All right, this is a Signo. Well, this one might not be Signo. It's by the Michibichi pencil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go around the rounded edge of each of his little 
wings on his body. The ones I can make out. <laughs> hard to see it's easier if when you're doing your belly on your owl if you use a lot of real different colors of paper I don't know if you can see that or not see how I went around the the bits so that's kind of the thing I'm going to do um on him is I'm just going to keep doodling and playing but that's going to be what I scan and then I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to make some cards up and I'll mail them out hi Pam and Shannon will be on in an hour I'm at just about at my limit of what I like to do is about two hours and yes, Pam and I have been sewing up crazy, crazy sewing here. Pam's actually been working on the dresses all year. She did the right thing. I cut two out in January and then just sewed them up last month. So if you would like to receive a card, if you'd come back and leave a comment and say, just say, I'd like an owl card or something like that, I'll send you an owl card. Okay, if I can find your address. And I will let you guys go and take a break before Shannon comes on. And I'll see some of you over there. All right. So I'll do a close up on the alley. And I will be adding doodling and I'll put a quote on it as someone or, you know, a, something autumnal. Probably put it down in the bottom here. And I'll do that before I scan him in. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And next week, I'm going to try to have it all worked up to where we make a charm-sized owl. A sewn. A sewn one. All right. I will see some of you later. Oh, that was supposed to go in that pocket. Have a great afternoon, guys. Got you, Pam. I'll put you down. So Pam says she would like an owl card. So if you would leave it in the description, not the, the chat below the video, I'll get you there too. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.